guess where we're camping. We decided. We came to the beach. Padre Island. We are a little nervous. We're a little scared to see how this is going to turn out, so we're just going to do one night. We've heard a lot of horror stories about high winds and sand getting into everything, and you just finally get tired of it. The winds are only max 17, 18 miles per hour, and then they kind of slack off to 15, 12. We're just going to see what happens. We're going to try it out. Who knows? We may like it. I did get some stuff to eat at the grocery store. You saw that. Nothing too crazy because I didn't know about cooking with the wind and all that. But we're going to get out the batwing awning. We're going to put up one of the shields. We're going to set the little tent up right here, which you have not seen us get out. Um, it is actually just a 10 by 10. It's the Alps Mountaineering, but we did get, uh, we had to go with a newer version. So we're going to try that one out tonight. Yeah, we're excited. Can't wait. Look at this gorgeous view right here. This is all ours. starting to geek out right now this is this is pretty cool this is one of the cooler camping situations I've been in I know we were nervous at first about wind and sand but I think now that we got this this whole thing set up right I think we're pretty good to go I, I feel confident that we're gonna enjoy ourselves I actually feel confident we might do this again I must say it is hard to fight the urge to want to pick up the trash and there's so much trash but I don't want to spend my whole time here picking it up so kind of just getting the big pieces that I can man <laughs> this is cool this is cool this is cool man just a little bit just a little bit this is some research there's only like a handful of beaches in the country maybe 10 that you can drive in camp on very few very few this is the longest one in the country still 60 miles is how long this island is we have entered up here uh, at the north beach area main entrance and we got on the sand here and we drove down to mile marker five we are literally at mile marker five we see the sign from where we're camping but this thing keeps going all the way down south to mile 60. Padre Island is off the coast of Texas about two miles or so in South Texas pretty close to Mexico and it's a national park or it's under the National Park Division so it's Padre Island National Seashore and this division of the National Seashore is protecting the world's longest undeveloped barrier island and there's barrier, barrier islands from Texas all the way up to Maine along the coast of the US but all of them have development on them. They either have condos, businesses, old homes, historical sites. This one, not developed at all. And these sand dunes behind us can get up to 50 feet. And on the other side of all these sand dunes are grasslands with brackish water ponds that migra migratory birds live in. And a lot of endangered species of turtles live on this island. Uh, there's white-tailed deer that live over there, coyotes. I mean, there's a lot of life here besides just the birds that we've been seeing. So once you hit sand, you have five miles of good packed sand. And that's basically where we stopped because we didn't really 
want to kind of risk going too far without having recovery tracks but they do strongly suggest once you get past mile marker five you need a four-wheel drive recovery tracks and be prepared that if you do get stuck you won't have phone service it's very spotty or non-existent past this point and gets even worse but if you have a two-wheel drive vehicle you can come to this point besides those cool little facts kelly is getting cold now yes sun's going down we are warm we are cozy i never wore a jacket or hiking boots on a beach before that's the first i was about to say i might change again to my my next level of warm clothes and what's that my thermal pants and a sweater <laughs> all right let's change one more time i have different levels while kelly changes i want y'all to know we got a pretty sweet spot there is no one miles and miles away from us so this this way and there's only one rv camper that way well angel princess what are you making tonight so tonight for dinner i'm just doing like i said something really easy it's turkey sandwiches but it's not just your traditional turkey sandwiches I'm gonna kind of dress it up a little bit. We had it the other night. It was really good. We already had it. Oh, with oh the pesto. Oh my god, pesto? you already forgot. No, I remember. I remember. With the pesto yeah. and the avocados. Avocado, pesto, tomatoes. Tomato. Yeah. Oh, my tomatoes are crushed. Oh yeah. Anyway, so it's gonna be pretty good. Already, and I got some stuff here. Okay, let me go put some different socks on because maybe that's the issue. I'm not really. She's sure. changing again. Now that I've changed into my, this is level three of my warm attire. Now we can really think about what we're doing here. So we have arugula, pesto, turkey, other turkey from the other day, tomatoes. Y'all are gonna be shocked. There's literally no cheese in this. I know, you're like, what? Tilly's not using cheese? It doesn't really need it. The first thing we have to do is cut these avocados up and um, put them in a bowl. Now, I'll have to say, I never thought in a million years, pesto and avocado would go together like peanut butter and jelly. It's that good. Yeah, it's really that good. I think the wind is picking up, which I thought it was supposed to die down to like 15. It was 17. But we do think the wind's picking up, but we are still protected behind this wall. I'm a little nervous about the wall though. I noticed that this tarp is kind of cheap and we bought it on like a real cheap clearance tarp. We didn't spend a lot of money on it because we weren't trying to do anything fancy with it. And it's kind of... Now this happened when we were putting up the tarp in the Washita's of Arkansas. That's whenever that had happened when we made that uh, canopy that didn't work, that failed. I think it can hold on through the night. We'll just have to get a new tarp or try to figure out a way to fix that. So we're gonna smear some pesto on one end. And then we have some avocado on the other end of the bread. Now we need I have everything seasoning. And then we have the red pepper flakes. A little bit of kick. So that everything seasoning, she thinks she got that from an Albertsons location. I, did. I got it at, at Albertsons, but I've seen it at Natural Grocer. I've seen it at Kroger. Trader Joe's has it. And what kind of turkey is this? Um, this is just hickory smoke, but you can get, you know, whatever kind you like. And I like shaved. That's just me. This will be yours, babe. It's got a lot of meat on it. So now we have tomatoes. Whatever lettuce you like. This is baby spinach and arugula, I believe. But, you know, whatever lettuce that you like. You can just do it like that. There we are. And to go with this, we have plantains. What? Yeah, look at that. So that sandwich was really good. You should try it. It's quick, easy, delicious, fresh. But we are just gawking over this 
red orangish moon like it is insane Seeing the moon on the ocean, camping on the beach, or the Gulf of Mexico, and camping on the beaches, on up there is one of the most amazing things I have ever done. It's pretty sweet. Enjoy our tea for the night. We're going to see if we make it through the night. We have ginger, lemon, ginger, and honey. I think we'll make it through the night. I think we will. I think We've we selected will. tents that have been way more men than that. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> But we'll see y'all in the morning. See you in the morning. Good morning. We survived. And it wasn't really that bad. I thought it was going to be like a sand swirling around. But really it was just on the floor. Apparently I was really worried about the sand. <laughs> but it was really nice yeah it got dewy so yeah the tent got a little wet on the outside which was weird but it was good for my hair my hair feels soft so there's a plus kelly's hair feels soft and my hair is greasy as always just because i got oily skin but it was nice sleeping it sounded like a uh, well you hear it all night long never never ended i actually like that i slept so hard and it was really quiet uh i don't know if you saw but we don't have really any neighbors there's an rv way down that way but i was concerned about people coming down at night and driving and really it kind of stopped about i want to say about 8 30 9 it really kind of stopped with the traffic and then we had some early people probably come down here to fish uh there was about four vehicles about 5 30 ish but we're up early, so we're gonna try to catch the sunrise. If you saw last night, we caught the moonrise, and now we're gonna see if we can catch the sunrise. And it is seven o'clock right now. So and let's... the sunrise at like seven twelve. Or something. It does. I need to get up then. Let's go check it out.
That looks pretty darn good, doesn't it? These are some camp style tacos. Like breakfast tacos. Breakfast camp tacos. Kind of like street tacos, but better. So we caught the sunrise. I did not expect to catch the sunrise because we saw clouds right when we came out, but boy, it's kind of sunny right now, actually. I need my sunglasses. Today, I didn't have any more Monterey Jack cheese. So I used mozzarella cheese, and it's still good. As I was walking around, scouting around camp, just looking around. You said around three <laughs> times. Yeah. And I found something that might intrigue a lot of viewers who ask, do we ever encounter wildlife? Yes, but sometimes we never see it. I think we had a coyote come by our camp last night. Actually, I don't think, I know. So, coming from the north, heading south, there are coyote tracks, and here's the coyote tracks, and the coyote tracks start arching up away from camp, where our camp was. If you can tell, it keeps going. And then once, because originally, they were further down on the bank. They came up to avoid our camp because they didn't want to interact and went way up along the dune here. If you notice, they came right back down. Then on the back side of the dune, I wanted to see the grassland area. So I hiked up here and apparently there was some kind of a uh, ruckus going on last night. I think a coyote was trying to catch a mouse. Like I was showing y'all a minute ago, there's camp right there. You come up over here, and right here are all these little footsteps, all this going on. If you look real close, little bitty mouse tracks mixed in with coyote tracks, and it just got crazy right here. So if you look right here, it's some little mouse tracks. A few more going down in there. And then right here, mixed in on the mouse tracks, is one coyote track. I'm pointing this out to show that coyotes and a lot of wildlife want to avoid us. So they always try to put this invisible barrier around us and they'll arch away to make sure they stay out of, out of sight. Usually out in the woods we don't get to see that because there's not sand or something to leave footprints so we can actually see what has been at camp. That is a perfect example of wildlife trying to avoid humans. And one other perfect example was when we were in Idaho and a moose and her calf had gone around our whole entire camp. Now bears, if you do have food in your camp, bears won't arch away. Bears will come up into camp. We've had that happen before where we left food out right when we first started camping. We didn't leave food out, we left a cooker out. I can't believe we haven't had any bears come up while we're actually cooking. We've had no animals come up while we're cooking. Well, because we're being loud or something? Yeah, there's a lot of activity. It's when we go to bed and we die down the fires go out fires keep animals away too so if you have food out overnight or you have something that had food cooked on it yes bears will come and they'll come up in your camp coyotes uh, raccoons most definitely matter of fact raccoons will come up pretty soon like they don't they don't play they'll get up in your stuff we didn't even hear that didn't even know it happened until this morning but we're really digging this still it's been great. I recommend it. Check the weather first. Check the... I usually... I use AccuWeather and Weather Channel app. And for the wind, if you want to go hour by hour, you can check Weather Channel. AccuWeather doesn't do the hour by hour with the wind. I like AccuWeather more for um, rain because it gives you the exact percentage or inches of rain per hour. That's why I use both. I toggle back and forth. But I use the Weather Channel app 
for wind. And so, like, right now the wind's pretty chill. I noticed that, like, today, for example, last night it said 18 to 17 mile per hour winds, hour by hour. And then today it was going to die down in the middle of the night, which it did to about 15, now 12. So today it shouldn't get over 15. It's just going to fluctuate from 12, 13, 14, 15. Which we'll be out of here probably later this evening. We're going to kind of spend the majority of the day here. Back on our grapefruit kick again. I was wrong. I used to say thick skins, man, it wasn't a good grapefruit. These are pretty solid grapefruits. Now that we've had a full day here so far, I'd have to say, it's worth it. It's worth camping on the beach. I actually thoroughly enjoy this whole experience and I would do it again. I'm having a great time. I actually want to come back. You do? Mm-hmm. Like soon. Like real soon? Yeah. Oh, heck yeah. Like before we leave Texas. Highly recommend camping on Padre Island National Seashore. Check the weather, number one. Number two, make sure you have a way to block the wind if you're in a tent. Number three, prepare for sand, but it's not gonna be as bad as you think it is. Especially if you have something as large as we have to block everything. If we were on the other side of that, we would probably have a lot of sand blowing up, mm -hmm. but because we've blocked so much wind, it's really not that bad on this side. And it helps to be off the ground. We have the cots. So there was sand in the bottom on the ground. So it's better to be off the ground. Oh, you're talking about the tent? Uh -huh. On the ground of the tent. So on the floor of the tent, we did have a little bit of sand. Not a lot. A lot less than I thought we would have. Of course, we didn't walk in and out with our shoes like normal. We never wear shoes in the tent. Have a little tray we set them on. And we knocked them off before we put them in. Made for an easy cleanup. So for all the, the fear we had of actually doing this from hearing horror stories from other people, I would do it again in a heartbeat. I really would. Yeah. But we're going to go ahead and pack all this up and see where the road takes us. We'll catch you on the other. See ya.